Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of 7 Minute Scaling Secrets where we interview entrepreneurs and learn a secret on how they scale up their businesses. Today we have a special guest, William Sheffer, who's been a serial entrepreneur and has always been heavily invested and present in the F&B scene. Hey William, welcome to the show. Um, uh, please tell the audience a bit more about yourself. This episode was brought to you by Superscaling. Join the Superscaling Ignite program today and learn how you can systemize and superscale your business so that your revenues can grow to at least $100,000 a month with a productive team from all over the world, raving fans as clients and happy founders who have true freedom. Visit superscaling.com slash ignite today. And now back to the episode. Hey, Evan, thank you very much for the opportunity. That's great. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, so I'm William. I'm, um, I was born and raised in Monaco, Monte Carlo. I'm half English, half French. I've, um, yeah, I'm a Syrian entrepreneur, as you said. Um, I've lived 11 years of my life in Asia, uh, Hong Kong, Bangkok, and Singapore. Um, I've always been in F&B industry. I've, I've started and run different businesses in bar, restaurants, uh, distribution business. And now my latest, uh, my latest uh, venture was it's in beer industry. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've founded with my co, my uh, co-founder, with my, my, my friend, yeah, and co-founder uh, Anthony uh, Monte Carlo Beer, which is a uh, the first beer approved by the palace and the government of Monaco. Uh, we founded that three years ago in 2019, and uh, yeah, and then so far the journey has been been amazing, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I happen to know an interesting nugget. Uh, the prince of Monaco actually drinks your beer. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a great achievement. Very proud of this. Um, we we started um, we started actually very uh, very strong. We we went to see all the big bosses in 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 Monaco. We started make, making some noise, and uh, the TV started to re- uh, you know do interview, radio the interview. We did a few podcasts as well. Um, and then the prince, yeah, stopped hearing from us. So we, he decided just to order to try and then he's been ordering ever since. So it's been almost, almost two years now. So yeah, he loves it from what we heard. <laughs> yeah, that's a great endorsement. Tell us more, like how does a, you know, a brand that came out of nowhere, uh, manage to get interest from everybody, manage to even land the, the rights to use the the word Monaco and and how does that even work? Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, the Monaco, the Monaco is the name is 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 is, is of course a country, but it's also a brand. It's been protected by the government and and uh, trademark and protected by the government of Monaco. So they are very careful in how they use the name. They don't want to use. They don't want anyone to use the name just to to sell more products, which 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 makes sense. So we we did the right way. We we contacted the the, the government and say that we want to we're from here obviously uh we are not just benefit we just don't want to take advantage of the name we're just from here we want to do something that it doesn't exist in monaco um with my business partner and i have always had um experience in the fnb business in bar businesses so we we found that interesting that monaco doesn't have um its own beer every i mean i guess 90% of countries do uh, own a beer. I mean, do have their own beers, local beers. So that's what we wanted to do. Uh, we did we did apply as like an application, basically, which uh, got approved after after actually a month or two. And um, they let us, so we had to go through back and forth with the packaging as well. We, we have, there were a few details that we couldn't use on the bottle. So we had to change the packaging uh, a couple of times. But then eventually, yeah, we got, we got the name approved. Um, which was a great first step. Uh, that was even before we could start the company. So that was the first step. Then we started a company, and the idea was not only to sell a good-looking beer with with uh, you know with the Monaco name on it. Uh, we also wanted to do something um, out of quality. It was the ingredients chosen and and the the the, the process uh, we use is very uh, very meticulous, very very particular. So we wanted to do something. A high quality, high premium beer with premium ingredients as well. So all our ingredients are from um, sustainable agriculture, from France. Um, we um, we filter our beer 
it's it's the whole process it's it's the it's it's very um yeah meticulous like as i said so it's not only about a good looking beer not only a a name it's also a quality product which which is which is inside yeah love it uh i'm a big fan of beer myself and recently the craft beer scene has exploded right not just not just you know i i would say everywhere and um i think getting quality beer beer that's been like through a very artisanal process uh, results in something that's totally different than any of the commercial beers and i love what you guys are doing and i can see the bottle in the background it looks uh it looks really pretty <laughs> the it's a shade of pink and there's a white bottle as well yeah it's 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 white and red it's supposed to be red it's because of the white it, it does come out a bit pink but it's it's supposed to be red yeah uh it, they're both the same color yeah red it's obviously out of the monaco flag uh red and white which is exactly same uh flag as singapore this is a funny story <laughs> uh, it's a fun fact but yeah um but yeah no you're right to so go back to your crowd it's it's people are getting more and more cautious about what they they drink and what they eat as well um it, it started with the food uh, but people also have um, they they don't they don't they are a bit getting tired of drinking um, uh, those industrial uh, product I mean drinks in general. So um, the craft beer has has really um, taken a lot of importance into into our into our um, into our world into supermarkets as well. Um, if I don't know if you realize, but in supermarkets now it's the 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 aisles of of beers are just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Pe- people are really cautious and love trying new new beers and love also hearing stories about new beers. So it's it's um no, it's a great um it's a great moment to start um uh, momentum to start that that uh, that business and um yeah so far so okay. good. And and what was the angle that you guys uh adopted so that there was so much publicity and and hype about Monte Carlo beer? Was it because it was the first beer in monaco or like what angle was was used um yeah it's a good question we because we're both from monaco but monaco does have this 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 image of um you know like very uh um i'd say like um like glamorous you know it's very it's very shiny it's very uh it's very luxurious it's people think when if you think when you think monaco you think about formula one yachts you know reach people uh, we grew up here so obviously there was also an, another another side of monaco which is it's our you know our world so the idea was to put monaco on a map um and to show that monaco is not only um you know bling bling is not only uh, is not only shiny is not only yachts and 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 money it could also be um could also be people with fashion and and uh, good products um and and yeah and then and then people that have they work hard as well to uh, you know to uh, to to do something meaningful and good so um so yeah that that was the angle the angle was to put monaco on a map but put a different image of monaco um and i guess and they also the marketing we use was basically my business partner and I it was just two of us just going on TV and just saying like, Hey, this is what we do. We love Monaco. We love beer. We travel the world. This is what we do. Um, and people like that. People like that. They were just like, Oh, it's finally something different from Monaco. Not just like, Oh yeah, this, this rich guy that did this and did that. So no, it's, we, we did, we displayed another image of Monaco, I'd say. So I guess. I want to say, and I want to, I want to hope that it's that's the reason why Monaco beer, Monte Carlo beer, has been uh, successful so far. Awesome! And between you and your your co-founder, yep. uh, is either one of you the brewer, or do you? No, no, no. So we are we we both businessmen. So my my business partner, he's my my best friend as well. Uh, we we've, we've been knowing each other for twenty years. Um, we are we businessman and salesman um so, so before we started this business we 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 thought that it would be great to um surround ourselves with a great you know professional team um and that's what we did um instead of setting up our own brewery straight away what we did is we went to different breweries uh, in the region uh, that already exist and that were already brewing their own beer and to um to introduce our you know project um some of them you know so we did also we didn't have the recipe but we 
told them basically what we wanted. Um, and and so we chose one, we picked one, um, and um, we worked together on the recipe. Those guys have a team of five people uh, dedicated to the brewery. Um, they're basically expert. They're, 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 for, me, for me, they're cooks. They, you know, you just tell them what you want, and then they they assemble all the ingredients and and uh, and come up with a great uh, great recipe. So it took us a few months as well to get uh, to get the, the, the perfect recipe, uh, which we did. And today we've been working with them for and, and doing the marketing and communication. Yeah. Nice. Um, and I know a little bit about your backstory. Uh, and this this is a great segue into the questions that you know I ask all guests. You have a interesting backstory because. You went to school in Asia, and after you graduated, you decided to set up a business right out of school. Uh, that's pretty incredible because it does the story doesn't end there. You've moved countries and set up business after business. Uh, now you're back in Monaco. Uh, this is this is great because the two questions that I ask everybody, uh, every guest that comes on the the show is number one: What is the most important habit? In order to be a successful entrepreneur like yourself, what goes through your mind, right? Uh, and number two, what advice would you give another business owner? Let's start with the first question. What would you say your most important habit is? Um, I think for myself is the fact that I, I never, um, I always thought that I could, um, okay, how could I say? Uh, like I don't believe in failures. I always thought that what I'm doing at this right moment will uh, bring something um, amazing to my life. And um, from it's been yeah, I've been an entrepreneur for what 12, 13 years now, and everything that I've done so far led me to who I am today and where I am today. Um, so my habit will be just to always believe in myself. And I mean, I always believe in myself in anything I do. I, I, I play sport as well. I play tennis. I always believe that I'm, I'm capable of doing it. And, um, and with this habit, you know, remain positive, stay positive. I've, again, I've, I did, I did encounter failure. If you can, I mean, as, as a business, business owner, but yeah. again, without this, I wouldn't be here today. So yeah, always believe in, I always believe in myself. I guess that's my, I don't know if it's a habit, but it's just my what I always uh, believe. Yeah, it's absolutely essential. I think people fear failure, but that's not supposed to be the case. I think uh, failure yeah. is just one step along the journey to success. And exactly, I think that's yeah. a great habit and mindset to have as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Exactly, yeah. um, and the second question, what yeah. advice would you give another business owner? Uh, what advice? I'm trying to think what advice I would have liked to receive that, you know, 10 years ago. But um, there was this sentence that is in French, but I'm sure I can translate it in English. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 we say always believe in yourself. Luck helps, but hard work always, pay, always pays off. So I guess, I mean, every entrepreneur here in, 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 in this world, I guess, know how to, you know, what, what it is to, to work hard. But, but it's, Sometimes you do work hard and you feel that it doesn't pay off. You just like, my God, I've been working so you know so many hours. I've been working my ass off on on this, on this project, on that project, and you feel that it's not going anywhere. But I can tell with my you know small experience that it always pays off. And even though it's not the right project and you might fail that one, um, the work you put on for for that for that particular company will uh, will uh, yeah. It, it will pay off for your next project and 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 eventually you will you will realize that it was not for nothing so yeah i don't know if it's a, an advice but uh i like that sentence that yeah always believe in yourself luck helps but hard work always pays off yeah uh i i, I i'm a big believer of trusting the process yeah listening to the process uh, uh because eventually we kind of know where we want to go and sometimes it's not a straight path. Sometimes the path just <laughs> it's never a straight path. Zigs yeah. and zags, and maybe it takes you yeah. one round around. But uh, eventually, committing to that path and just making sure that we take one step at a time does lead us to where we want to go. Uh, yeah, absolutely love that that piece of advice. <laughs> um, 
William, if people will want to uh, you know, find out more about you or connect with Monte Carlo Beer, where should they go? Um, so yeah, on like social media platforms, um, Instagram, Monte Carlo Beer, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, our website is www.montecarlobeer.com. Um, very easy, very straightforward. And I'm also um, I'm also um, reachable on LinkedIn um, at William Sheffer, my name. Um, I usually reply to messages as well. So um, so yeah. Awesome. But, Thank you so much for being on the episode and thank, thank you, you everybody uh, for thank listening in to another exciting episode of 7 Minute Scaling Secrets. If you guys like this episode, please remember to like, comment, share and uh, subscribe to uh, the 7 Minute Scaling Secrets podcast. Take care everybody and I'll look forward to catching up with you in the next episode.